<laughs> Good afternoon and welcome to the Pine Bluff City Council meeting of April 16th, 2012. Uh, I'll call this meeting to order. Okay, may we have a roll call, please? Alderman Holcomb, here. Alderman Bryant, here. Alderman Eastley, here. Alderman Stepp, here. Alderman Walker, here. Alderman Boyd, here. Alderman Brown, here. Alderman May, here. All right, thank you. Each of you have a copy of the minutes from our April 2nd. Second. It's been moved and probably second that we approve the minutes presented on April 2nd, 2012. All in favor of that motion, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries 8-0. Ms. Hogan, we're going to roll into our committee reports. First, we'll have witnesses and resolutions, please. Witnesses and resolutions committee prior to the meeting, and we're going to finish all four resolutions. Right. And at this time, I'm going to present a proclamation to the clerk and her department. I'm going to ask them to come up, come up a little higher. <laughs> Never smile for camera. Mm -hmm. Um, this is a, first of all, I have an announcement. Municipal Clerks Week, April the 29th, May the 5th, 2010. The clerk's office. 2012. 2012. Right? <laughs> Going back. Uh, the clerk's office at 200 East 8th Avenue Suite 202. Uh, some of the philosophy about this week is learn about the job function of the Pine Bluff City Clerk's Office. View historical documents and record books dating back to the 1900s. Compare antique office equipment with today's modern office equipment and meet the city clerk and her staff. And open houses for CR, UAPB, Dollarway High School, Time Love High School, Washington Chapel High School, Monday through Friday from 10 to 12 and from 2 to 4. Okay, now there's the proclamation. And we all realize how important the clerk's office is uh, in preparing and keeping historical documents, um, doing research. We call them all the time about various things and we get good response from the clerk's office. And I hope it always continues to be that way. Yes. Having said that, proclamation, Municipal Clerks Week, April 29th through May 5th, 2012. To whom all these presents shall come, greetings. Whereas, the office of municipal clerk is one of the oldest among public service which exists throughout the world. And whereas, in 1984, President Ronald Reagan and in 1994, President Bill Clinton signed a proclamation officially declaring Municipal Clerks Week the first full week of May and recognizing the essential role municipal clerks play in the local government. And whereas the Office of Municipal Clerk performs principal function of the democratic process and is a vital part of local government, and whereas the duties of the municipal clerks include but are not limited to preparing agendas, taking minutes, maintaining ordinances and resolutions, files, maintaining historical records, performing bid openings, and serving as a clearinghouse for information about local government, and whereas the Office of Municipal Clerk consistently and efficiently serves as local legislative body, the municipal staff, and the general public by recording the actions of the council and committees, maintaining them for reference and inspection, and preserving them for historical continuity that can be passed to future municipal officials and staff members. Now, therefore, we extend appreciation for the outstanding performance of our municipal clerk, Lorena Whitfield, and her staff, and to all municipal clerks for vital services they perform and their exemplary dedication to the communities they represent and call upon all citizens to join in celebrating Municipal Clerks Week April the 29th through May the 5th. And it is signed by the Honorable Irene Hogan, the Senior Council Member, April 16, 2012. And I would add, if you can keep the minutes of what we talk about up here, you do it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. 
That's it. Oh, that's it, Mr. Okay. What does it mean, Mr. Brummett? Mayor, I move that the bills that the city owes be paid. Second. It's been moved and probably second that the bills of the city be paid. All in favor of that motion, let it be known by saying aye. 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 All righty. Before I relinquish the, the microphone, sir, I'd just like to ask you again. You told me to send you a formal request for answers to questions. I sent it to you. I still have not gotten those answers. Uh, did you not get a FOI answer from the city attorney? I, got an, I sent you first an FOI request. Then Monday, I sent, last Monday, I sent an email from him as an alderman asking you specific questions that I'd like to be answered, which you said you would do if I would give you specific questions, and I did. I answered the FOI request right along with the city attorney, but we also talked and spoke with the city attorney as well as the municipal league. That, if that does not suffice, the recommendation is that you get with the municipal league attorney and the city attorney. They've asked me not to speak to an issue that might create some problems because of an ongoing investigation. So my recommendation to you, sir, is that you get with the city attorney if that does not suffice what she's answered, she answered every question that you had on that FOI. No, she did not. Yes, she did. No, she did not. Did you not answer every question on the FOI, man? There weren't any answers. There were just... She provided a response. He, she provided a response then. And the response was, I don't believe correct to begin with, because... <laughs> well, you have to talk to the city attorney if you don't believe they are correct well, then. I think other aldermen feel the same way. They uh, all told me that. Well, if they all told you that then, let me suggest all of you meet with the municipal league attorney and the city attorney. When Whitfield you know. asked Chief Jones about the issue with the chief's boyfriend, it is stated that Chief said she had taken care of it. She also stated up here, or Whitfield said that, she said that uh, I promoted you and gave you a pay raise. If you or anybody messes with my boys or my man, you're going down, and I mean that. I want to know, did she say that? I suggest you give it to the city attorney, and I suggest you give it to the municipal league attorney. They'd be more than happy to address that with you. Thank you. There's an easy answer, it's yes or no. No, that's not the answer that you're getting from me. The correct answer that you will get will come from the legal representation, did sir. did you not tell me at the last meeting you would answer it if I gave you these questions? No, and no. Yes, you did, sir. We answered them. The well, let me tell you something. We answered them. They may maybe not to be to your satisfaction, but they've been responded to. There was no answers to They you. were responded to. Right. <laughs> Whether they're the answer that you agree with or you want, I'm not going to give then, up on that. So I, suggest, I suggest that you contact the municipal league attorney. You. That's your prerogative. That's right. That's your prerogative. Thank you. I don't think you ought to waste this city's time or your own time because of the fact that I've no, responded sir, to you, then, did, sir, did I told you where to go get the answers. Answer. I suggested to you where to go get the answers. I mean, you want, <laughs> you're going to disregard what our legal representation tell us? No, sir, I'm not. Okay, follow up based with me. Based on the FOI, she might Thank be you. correct, but based on my request here, I asked you for answers. You told me then, you didn't. Then I'm suggesting to you where to go get the answers. And I think that's the best way to handle it. Well, I don't agree. Then, then you and I got a disagreement. Yes, sir. Then, <laughs> then we had a stalemate because I'm telling you basically where to go and you're telling me you aren't. So you can waste your time and the citizen's time by asking me additional questions every meeting and I'm going to give you the same answer. Well, citizens want to know the answers to those questions. Then I think the citizens if you represent the citizens, in your email you said that citizens have been asking you, yes, then I suggest that you follow up with the municipal league attorney and the city attorney, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. Okay. Is that it for your report? Yes. Thank you. We have economic community development. Uh, Mayor Reeders, I uh, do not have a report from community development but I would like to follow up with uh, Chief uh, Jones about um, at the last council meeting uh, that <coughs> about the hats that was purchased and it was stated uh, that you had received um, confirmation uh, from Lieutenant Rollison uh, that the hats uh, were uh, within uh, the rules and the regulation policies and procedures. Yes, go ahead, ma'am. Uh, the hat situation is, I did not eliminate any hats. What I did, based on what we were doing for inspection, we all try to get to Kalia's standards, um, at least to try to make sure that we get close to Kalia. We have never in 
the history of this department had a formal inspection. I cannot believe that uh, just uh, city this side or department this side, we have never had a formal inspection. In order to have a formal inspection, everybody has to have a hat. Now, most of my officers have not purchased a hat. If you like my new officers, they haven't even gotten a hat. The hat didn't cost anybody any money. It was taken out of their clothing allowance. And in fact, the hat that we have currently is over $100. The one that we're going to, just for the patrol officers, that when the supervisors wear a certain hat and the patrol officers wear a certain hat, it's actually cheaper. The hat only cost me $37 plus another $40 for the badge. We're talking about a $70 hat versus something that's gonna cost me almost 120 something dollars. By the time you add the badge, the hat, along with the little bean thing that has to go across it. Now, as far as it coming before city council, I called my lieutenant in there to ask him what do we have to do to accommodate this happening. When he came into my office, he told me that we had to do a special ordinance, special bulletin. He did that. I came back, he typed it up, he signed it. He brought it back to me. My secretary's got a copy of that particular ordinance. It does not say on that that we had to take it before city council. They disseminated to the people that at the bottom of that, of that uh, uh, distribution list. So maybe it's because I didn't know exactly what to do, or maybe it's because my lieutenant didn't bother about telling me what to do, but we are here to make sure it's done correctly because that's the only thing I want to do. I don't ever want to do anything that's going to try to override the council. I'm not going to do anything that's going to try to bypass something or do it the wrong way. I'm looking at it from the standpoint that it's economical for the officers because all they talk about is increasing their clothing allowance. I can't do that, but I can at least make the things that they purchase on their clothing allowance a little bit cheaper. Well, did they need to purchase the hat? If they don't have one for the inspection, yes, they would have to purchase one. Have they had an inspection? No, ma'am, we have not had an inspection. Because all okay. the hats have been uh, Okay, so the hats that you ordered, are they the type hats that are for with the policy and procedure that we have? I will admit they're not the same hat. Okay, well, that's, that's what we're talking about, uh, that you purchased the hats and they were not part of the policy and procedure. Okay. And, to, uh, and that doesn't fall under Lieutenant Rollison. You he's yep. the entire police department falls up under me. I'm not trying to lay blame on anybody other than myself. And like I just explained to you, Ms. Walker, if I did not do it the proper way, I'm not a computer, I'm going to make errors. So I'm here to try to correct that. So if that's what you're saying to me, we are prepared to do it at next council meeting to bring the ordinance for you, the whole nine yards. Bring what ordinance? What, excuse me a second. What are you asking to have done as well? Uh, she understands what I'm asking to have done. Well, obviously, uh, obviously I don't understand. That's why I'm asking. Okay, what well, is I'm, you like to have she, done? She's the police chief. Can I ask her? Uh, well, yes, you are asking her, okay. but I'm asking for okay. my benefit. What are you asking to have okay, done? Okay, well, well, let me ask her, and then she can okay. explain it to All you right. since she worked for you. Um, and and I, also. I work, for, I work for everybody. I work for the whole city of Pine Bluff. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So I work for everyone. I okay, just work but for he's everyone. your boss. She's aware of that. Go ahead and answer the question. Then. Okay. Uh, it also, uh, there have have there been some other changes with the policies and procedures no. about when you haven't wait till I finish asking the question. I'm just telling you that's the only one that I have made. Okay. Well, what about uh, when you take your leave? when you take your vacation time. Okay, what that has not been changed to the point of where is you can still take vacation time up until December 31st. But you have to understand that's our highest peak time crime. November and December is the peak time of crime in any city. But we all know that. You can check across the board, that is your peak time of crime. I cannot allow somebody to take a two week vacation, wait a week vacation during our peak time of crime. They can surely take vacation time I'm just telling them they cannot take a two or three week vacation time during those peak times apart. As an administrator, I have a right to do that. I'm not telling them they cannot take vacation time up until the 31st. They can take vacation time. You want to take two days here, three days here, that's fine. But I cannot have those scheduling times during those times I need my officers to be here in the city. Okay, do your policy say that, you're, that the vacation time has to be taken by November the 31st. 15th? And they, no. It says it has to be taken by the 31st. What it says. That's what you're saying. No, what the policy says is by the 31st. 31st of what, ma'am? Of, of November, excuse me, of December. But, but your policy, that, that is the original policy. You can ask any of but, my. Ms. But Martin, your policy let me, let me says what? Let me you can ask any of my command staff, and they will tell you exactly what I have said in my meeting. And I told them I do not mind them taking two or three vacation days, but if you cannot 
take two weeks in December and November when those are the peak times for my crime. That is what I'm telling you. You have, you got all three of them here, and you can call either one of them and tell you what I said in my staff meeting. Okay. Well, you're saying uh, with your crime, <coughs> is this the same crime that has been with all the other chiefs? But if He's if that me. if that is the case, you if you that? if you if you wanted to change it, why Excuse not? <coughs> uh, why not? You know, come before the council and change it like it's supposed to. That's not a, excuse me, Chief. That's not a policy change, ma'am. That's a recommendation that she's made to her staff that due to the fact that crime is always at a peak during the holiday season, November, December, the recommendation is that don't take all your vacation time or save it for that particular so time of the year. You want to stretch it over. You want to have officers you won't have your peak force, in fact, in place during that particular point in time. So you can't have everybody on vacation. Okay, but if this just happened, if this no. is going, if this is going to be, why not change okay. the policy I'll, and I'll procedure? Excuse, excuse me a second. Excuse me a second. It's not necessary. She runs the day-to-day -day operations. That's not a policy change. That is a recommendation that she's making. I tell my staff. We don't need everybody out at the same time. Let's work amongst ourselves to make sure that we are covering the citizens and covering the services we need to provide. You all can't be out during the holidays. I, I can understand English. Is it a problem with her saying it? No, I just said it so you'll understand how I feel about it as well. But I wasn't concerned about she, how she you said, felt she said about that. it. I was asking okay, her. She said that. Ms. Parker, I'll explain to what happened to you the first year I was here. 2010, I'm, 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 I'm not, well, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, go, I'm not going, I'm not going back. Excuse, I'm not, excuse me. Let her I'm not going more. back to 2010. Well, that's what caused we, the incident. That's what caused me to do what I did. We, we I came up. We came, uh, excuse me. I did not have enough officers here to accommodate what I had here. There were so many people gone, I didn't have enough to cover my ship. I would not be put in that position again as an administrator and jeopardize the citizens of Pine Bluff. I would not do that, man. I will not. I bet. Okay. Thank you, Chief. And uh, no, I'm not finished. I'm not finished. Pardon me. I got one. I just, one thing I want to know before she gets there. And back with uh, Lieutenant Rollins. This, this is economic community development. Uh, with Lieutenant Rollins. This is Rollison. not public safety, and this is not the director of economic community well, development. She with has Lieutenant Rollins. Yeah, yeah. I understand she has a floor, but the fact is, this is not the time for that. With That's Lieutenant the point Rollison, I'm making. And you told me that you no, know, he had told you that you could purchase a hat. No. That's what, what you told me. What I told you was that he told me I did not have to make a policy change. I was assuming that the special <laughs> order, that the special order would be in place and that allowed me to do what I did. That is what I told you, Ms. Walker. Okay, and I he, never told you like Lieutenant Wallace said I could purchase a hat. Okay. I told him that an ordinance was put in place or the excuse me, special order was put in place, which I thought enabled me to purchase the hat. So okay. And he told you that you didn't have to do a policy change. That's what my assumption was because when he is a person. Okay, well, did he say it or it was an assumption? <laughs> You you told you told me before. You just said it was assumption. Just tell her it was an assumption. You you told me before. Excuse me, Ms. Walker. You told me before that Lieutenant Rollison told you that, and I asked you for a statement from Lieutenant Rollison. That's not true. That's not what I told you. I told you that Lieutenant Rollison did a special bulletin in order for me to do that. That is what I told you. That's what I thought that was all I had to do. When I called someone over there to say, what do I have to do to make a, to make a change and make, to make this happen, and I called a person who's an expert over there to do those things, I assumed that everything was done in that order. Now, grant you, it's my fault for not checking up and make sure what was done, but I did what I thought was supposed to be done this way. I'm not here to deceive anyone. I'm not here to take anything from anybody. I'm here to run a police department. Aaron, the fact is we're not concerned about you running it. It's about running it according to the policies and procedures yeah. so people, so that people will Excuse know me, what they are Chief. going to do from day to Ms. day. Ms. Walker, what would you like to have done? And that's what I'm trying to get at. What um, would you like to have done? For things to be done by policy and procedures so, like there. What, what has not been done by policy and procedures here? We just said. Okay, what would you we like to have said. it done? What I needs to be said. done, Chief, to have it done by, by policy? policy and procedure. I just told her that we are already doing it to bring the mm -hmm. council. That's what we want to know while it's Right now, to bring before council on our next meeting. The what? next meeting will be a public safety committee meeting. 
Prior, prior to the council meeting, Ms. Walker, okay. they will what, have will it there. What will he bring before then? And have what it there saying? and present it there. I'll bring the, the change in the policy to for the ordinance to put up new, new change to be done. Okay, so you're changing it. Uh, which one is that? The hat policy. Technically, I'm not changing it. I'm adding to it. I'm not changing anything other than adding to it. I'm adding a hat. The current hat that's there is going to be for my supervisors. Yeah, I think it's important that you can distinguish between the supervisor and you can distinguish between the patrol officer. So the supervisors wear a different hat than what your patrol officers wear. So you're so what is happening to the hats that they already had? The supervisors will wear them, ma'am. She just said that. You don't have that many supervisors to wear. And I have one other question. Yes. I just have one other question. Has uh, Lieutenant Rollison been moved from detective? Yes, he has. Okay. Yeah, if, if I may ask, was there a reason for that? Uh, at the request of his division head. You want, and that's that Ma'am, let me suggest this. That's a personnel issue. It does not to be, to be dealt with openly in the public. So if you'd like to get with me and the chief, we will deal with that with you, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. I will do that. Yeah, Mr. I'm just going, what's, what's, what's a, a, a professional inspection? What, what, I mean, what do you, what's it, I mean, for, and for, I'm at, and for yeah. inspection, what's that? No, formal. Formal, formal, formal inspection. inspection, what's the difference between right okay. that and formal? The, the it's, it's something that's, that's required by most police departments. I, every police department I've been at has we always have a formal inspection. At that time, you clear any auditing issues. You check to make sure that the flashlight is that's assigned to that officer, goes that flashlight for the, the gun that he has assigned to him. They do a car inspection to make sure you're keeping your maintenance on your vehicles, things of that nature. And it's done biannually. So it's just an inspection, in other words. Yes, it's just yes. an inspection. You've been in the military, it's the same thing. What's the hat have to do with that? I mean, I'm just asking. The hat, the hat really. The hat's just for distinction. The hat's for distinction, but there's oh, most of my officers. That's don't what have, I was the, Most of officers don't have hats. Yeah. Did you ask the new officers to come on? Nothing involved about purchasing a hat. What would you say? What is that? Because formal we never or, use them except for no. formal inspection, mostly, or for funerals and things of that nature. I'm just thinking, like, when you said formal inspection, I'm thinking, like, you know, like formal. <laughs> that, but, but it's but it's like it's like inspecting everything. I wish they've got. Thank you. That's okay. All I have to ask you uh, well, uh, one second, Chief Joan. Well, Mayor Rita, this question is for you. Uh, that I was looking through. Ms. Walker, well, can you let uh, us deal with this doing public safety? This is public economic safety. community development. Public we have a public safety, safety committee over. meeting. I just had a question well, about the uh, we'll uh, seven hundred dollar iPhone. Meeting. I wanted to know if you had authorized this. Yes. You authorized the seven hundred dollar. I sure did. I absolutely did. Pardon me? An iPhone that the chief needs to be able to look at the video cameras that we put up off of her phone and also be able to tie into her survey. The non-contract phone? It's an iPhone with Sprint. It is Sprint based. That's who we have a contract with, sir. Okay. Is there such thing as an upgrade where you could get it cheaper? I don't know anything about it. Do you? Yeah, I do. What can you get cheap at this? When you get an upgrade, instead of paying, uh, well, look, look, let me, let, paying me, let me say this. I, I don't know where you're going with this and, and why you're playing politics with the citizens of Five uh, Bluffs. Uh, you can say but one what, of the things that I'm trying to say to you at this say, particular point. Uh, in time. This is a question of why we have a $700 phone. That is the cost. So you can call it politics. That is or the contract cost for an iPhone. That's not, that's not a contract. This is for the phone you. itself. That's right, sir. That's the cost of the phone. Really? For government employees, yes. That's the okay. cost of the phone. Why are we with Sprint then? The, that's the iPhone. It's I mean, iPhone. You can get an iPhone for no, you can. ninety-nine bucks. No, uh, iPhone 4S. For let me let me ask you this: You go purchase one, we will be able to utilize it. So you go purchase for one hundred ninety-nine bucks. That'll do what we need to do. We will take care of it. All right. IPhone 4S. Go purchase it, the iPhone. Well, the go ahead. Go purchase the iPhone for hundred eighty nine dollars, sir. And you said I could meet, with you. Me. I could meet me. with you and Chief Jones about uh, Lieutenant Rollins. Excuse me, buddy. Well, you want to make the purchase? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Would you come speak to that? Let it, let the council know the difference between uh, if there's a hundred eighty nine dollar iPhone. I don't think there is. That's only if it's under contract. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. If it's arrow, but it wouldn't be that when you do functionality upgrade, and that capability. No, not that functionality, capability, and functionality. Yes, it is. 
if if it was an upgrade, if you were getting an upgrade, you would you could get the same phone for less money. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay, and you said that I can get with you and Chief Jones uh, in reference to Lieutenant Rollins. That's the proper place to get with us, okay. not here at council meeting. Well, it, you know, because no, personnel I, issues are I not asked, addressed openly. I asked, you said that I can get with you, so I Absolutely. Can. Okay. Anytime you like to. Okay. Thank you. Is that the end of your report? Mm, I think. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All righty. Public health and welfare. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, we didn't have a meeting, <clears throat> but as chair of the public health and welfare, I had a lot of calls about the mosquitoes, and I looked into it from the street department view, and they gave me the number of Mr. Mark Townsend at the Arkansas Health Department here in town, and his number is 535-2142. For those who want to know, it's about he sprayed for the mosquitoes in town, and his number is 535-2142, Mr. Mark Townsend. Thank you. All right, thank you, sir. Public works, I'm the board. Yes, sir, Mayor. Uh, we met on Friday the 13th and had a presentation from Mr. Matthew concerning resolution number three, and we voted for a due pass on it. And also, Mr. Matthew is going to come during this time and share with us that information as well as an update from Chester High and, Muriel's, and the Murder Center. All right. Thank Mr. you, sir. Matthew. I think Mr. Matthews is going to do Chester Hines, and then we're going to have some, our guest, uh, or okay. Ted, and then the engineer, project manager, come and speak to the other. Okay. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, we met with the uh, Public Works Committee uh, last Thursday, if I'm not mistaken, uh, to go to resolution that's number three on the agenda, which uh, we have on and, and Mr. Davis and myself, we, we will. Uh, Report on that when we get through with the Chester Hines uh, report. Before you, I think I presented everyone with a report in regards to an update as to where we are and the dollars that has been spent on improving the center. Uh, the dollar amount reflected is of, of the last Wednesday. Uh, there are ongoing uh, improvements going on as we speak now. So this, the dollar amount that is reflected is uh, reflecting what was spent as of last Wednesday. Also, I have included some before and after pictures uh, for the councilman who has not had a chance to go by and visit the center as to the improvements that have occurred. Uh, just a brief overview, uh, painting of 60% of the building is done, replacing the ceiling tiles, replacing the doors, uh, repairs to plumbing fixtures, repairs to bathrooms. Numerous items have been completed as reflected on the report that was given on the money that is expended. We're in the process of bidding the gym nation floor out, as well as the tile for the rest of the center. Also, the painting of the metal uh, overhang that goes around the building. We expect to have those bids back and report to the council at the next council meeting as to the cost for those. Uh, various items. Also, we have an ongoing contract with the painter that uh, if you will see his name on the back, uh, KTR Construction. He is approximately 50% through with uh, his painting of the building. Of course, we're dealing with the kids being in there, so we'll wait till school is out. We'll be out, I think, on the 19th or 18th of next month. We will complete our painting of the bathroom and the cafeteria area. We should also complete all our ceiling tile uh, replacement. Uh, a lot of damage was done to the tile prior to us replacing the roof several years ago. So upon completion of the painting, we'll have all the ceiling tile replaced. Also, we discovered when we replaced some of the ceiling tile that uh, when the roof was leaking, it damaged most of the insulation that was there. You know, the unforeseen items, so we are replacing all of the insulation that uh, is it currently in the building, it's old, it's down, it's deteriorated, and uh, we're moving forward with the project. We anticipate having the project completed, depending on the bids when we get back. By mid-June, hopefully before. So we would invite everybody to stop by and kind of see where we are in the process and, uh, that we're going through and the improvements that we're making uh, 
at the building. Yes, sir. In your, in your, do you kind of have a feeling for what you, kind of what you think the rest of it might cost? I mean, I know they're coming in with bids, but do you kind of have a, kind of a I estimate in your mind that you're looking at probably? Well, the big elephant in the room, as I said before, the gymnasium could range anywhere from twenty thousand to fifty thousand, and the floor covering, depending on the type. We're bidding. All types but, excuse me, there. when yes. you say gymnasium, you mean gymnasium flooring? Gymnasium floor. Yeah. Floor. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're, bidding, we're bidding all types that they're processed. They have the brown layout. They also have the wood floor. Uh, they also have the, the over seamless floor. Yeah. So depending on the type and, and how it will be applied to the building, we also have approximately 8,000 square feet of, of, of tile that has been in the school area that is worn. Mm -hmm deteriorated and we're getting that out completely in various types of, of, of tile, residual tile that's going to go down. So at this point, I hate to speculate, he kind of yeah. right, but we, we, we're going to try to make it as economical as possible and, and meet the needs for the kids that are there. Okay. Excuse me, let, let me address some more of Mr. Easterly's question here. One of the things that we found out, sir, is that once we've got started in there, we realized that we have a very strong, sturdy, well-built building that's been neglected over the last, yeah. the, the building's approximately 50 years old, and it's been neglected probably over the last 25 years. It's 50 so, years old? I think, and that was, 73. I'm sorry, 40 years old. Okay. 40 years old, and it's been probably been neglected over the last 20 plus years where we really hadn't done any maintenance on it. Yeah. What we're doing is bringing it to be ADA compliant. That's one of the things that we need to do. We're making sure that we're using good paint on the wall as opposed to just putting flat paint. We're putting paint that could be washed. We're putting a flooring that will have at least a 10-year uh, warranty or a lifespan on it. And uh, we're doing things that we think all the citizens of the community would be proud of, as well as the council, in addressing uh, a facility that served kids and been serving kids over the last 40 years in this community. So. You know, we, we are finding out that there's more dollars needed for this building simply because of the fact that we're going to do it and do it right. Well, so far it hasn't really been too bad. It's what, 28000 total now? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's, I mean, it's really. Yes. Uh, we're, we're, we're being cost effective and, and efficient. Keeping it down. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your hard work. Okay. Yes, sir. And, and yes. As Mayor said, that there are some items that such as uh, the P traps, the traps on all the sinks have never been replaced. The right. common items that, <laughs> that we didn't see. probably they're still there. Right, <laughs> right. So we, we, we're using the dollars to go as far as we can, and, and when we get to that point where we ran out, we will be back and let you know where we are. Okay, I think you're doing a good job on that, but, uh, but now I'm concerned about the murals, and when will you get started on that? Well, it's, I'm taking them one at a time, uh, simply because of the fact, going in, we really didn't think it was going to take as much with Chester Hines that we're finding out. The Merle Center will be another, uh, if you would, day by day operation until we can find out. And also, in conjunction with the multi purpose center, we're going to have to determine how much of what we want to invest in the <laughs> she teasing you, I hope. Uh, I hope. Uh, I'm not teasing him. And we have a report on that as well. I'm not, I'm not teasing him, but uh, anyway. Yeah. I have w one other question. I, I just want you to go on with the project. And you, I think you're doing well on that. But I don't think nothing should be contingent upon the multi purpose center, which may not, it, it may not happen. Nothing's contingent on that. And I guarantee you it will happen. It may not happen <laughs> in my lifetime. Yes, it will. Uh, okay. yeah, yeah, no doubt about it. We want you to be around. Uh, okay. No doubt about it. On this, is this Huntley Metal Sales? Is that a local company? Yes. I'm just not familiar with it. Uh, and what about uh, Kerr, Kerr Construction? Is that a local company? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Local, local, local contractor. He, he has the painting contract. 
They're good. I saw they were getting the most money, so I just wanted to know if they were local. Yes, ma'am. They are. Sending the money out of town. They are. Okay, I think you're doing a good job. I, I've seen it. And it's Thank you, Ms. Coming along. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Matthews. I think Mr. Davis and the others will speak to, to what's going on with the bond projects. Uh, on this selection committee uh, for our engineers and our architects was Angela Parker, uh, <coughs> Joe Children, uh, Don Sampson, uh, Steve Miller, uh, Fire Chief uh, Sean Howell, and myself. And we went through the process of selecting the architects and the engineers for the, the, the resolutions that are in your packet today under item three, I believe. And with that, uh, we're going to have Larry talk a little bit about where we are, and then Don will bring you up to date uh, with all the projects that we're working on currently. Larry, can you go up and uh, I will be speaking to the resolution that's, that's before you with regards to the selection uh, and the negotiation with the cost that, that is associated with it. And we somewhat uh, went through and we selected our contract is based on the RQs that were presented. Uh, they are listed uh, in accordance to each project. The first being the fire station remodeling of two and six, and the cost that we have expected for the renovation. Based off that cost, we use a percentage to come to a not to exceed amount for the architect or engineers uh, that are associated with that project. We reviewed them carefully. Uh, we have several local firms that we have recommended, Reed Architect as well as Nelson Architect. Uh, for these positions, they, they, they brought a spirit and excited our to us. We have worked with them before. We know that they can get the projects done in a timely manner. We have a good relationship with them. With regards to Walking Trail and Bronx Bayou, uh, we have recommended that McClellan Engineers uh, be awarded the contract. These con contracts are rent driven. In other words, we have received grants from the state and the highway enhancement projects uh, in the amount of $157,000 and $100,000. $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $
and the people present here. Uh, just to make it easier, well, first of all, thank you for letting me come before you. I think this is my first presentation since you all have selected me. And this last three, four months, I've been busy at knowing the projects, knowing the task committee members, knowing the city, and I think I am very comfortable now. So this is sort of a first report on what we are we have done so far and where we are today. And what I did is, is to make it easier, I made the uh, schedule a little bit colorful because it's easy to recognize. The one that you see in colors are the ones that we're focusing on right now. And also, the, the letters and things that I've used on the top, you will see abbreviation for it. For example, site selection is SS. Uh, procurement is PR. And VB is construction procurement. CP. So those. So when you see a schedule where it says CP, CP, PR, DD, that's what that means. And you'll see, for example, the first project, the model station number six. We are in May. We are. We'll be in the design stage. That's one of the project that's in the resolution to award. So that kind of gives you a little briefing on how the schedule is made up. And what I intend to do is update it every month or whenever everybody, the significant accomplishment happens. Larry has gone over the project and we're going to get into design. There are two projects now we are focusing on. One is the streetscape, which is uh, under the street department, the second page, uh, we, we have received uh, proposals from engineers and architects. We just didn't have enough time to evaluate as Larry sort of went over how we evaluated, scored, and then we selected. We feel like the Main Street project is important. It will require a little more uh, probably evaluation and may even uh, require some listening to the, each of the RFQ uh, farms. So we are kind of going to go do that this month. Um, and hopefully by the end of this month, we have a farm on board on the Main Street um, uh, streetscape. And the other project that is under police department is the police facility. And as you will see the schedule, basically we are sort of in the mode of site selection. And the reason it's taking so much time on the site selection is there are some environmental issues that we have to comply with. So we are in the second phase of the environmental uh, right now. So until those things happen, we really can't focus on a specific site or what we need to do. And hopefully that will happen in, because the second phase, the phase two environmental takes almost two months. That's when you see the extension of the SS to almost like August. We're thinking that it probably take that much time before we can actually decide what to do exactly on the police. Um, Question. Yes, sir. What are the sites you're looking at for the police facility? Well, the one that is really in the forefront is the Napa site, the old Napa building site. That has uh, gone through the first phase and we're looking into the second phase. So that is the only one that you've looked at? Well, you know, we were also, we were looking at the school site as well uh, at the, in the first phase stage. And, but based on various criteria, we're thinking that maybe that may not be as uh, good of a site for the police. It's large, lots of space that we don't know what to do with, and um, uh, the, I think the presence is important to the citizens. The presence is sort of in the neighborhood. So there are a few little things we put together, plus it's expensive to go into the second phase. So we thought maybe the Napa site will do the second phase, see how it so, the, so the, the school and the Napa site are the only ones you're looking at? We're also looking, at least, we really haven't looked at it. It's one of the sites that has been talked about. Is, um, what is it? Nelson, yes. Nelson Architecture Building on 10th Street. Yes. 10th Street. We really haven't gotten, that one is probably the least looked at. We have not, uh, well, I'm not the expert, but that would have been the first one I would well, I mean, we, we, are, we are getting into that because we're thinking that that probably wouldn't have any environmental issues to, oh, I'm sure it does. to, to mm -hmm. look at. So even if you look at now, it would be pretty simple. Um, so we're kind of getting into that. Uh, there's some more work to do, I have to admit, and we just haven't focused on that simply because 
there are some programming issues as well. The use of the building, what are you going to do with it, how much space you need, those things we have now settled on. And we're having a discussion with Chief Jones and every, you know, the task committee. Hopefully, shortly, we'll come to it exactly what we need. And that is to be decided to approve and hold on the site. I guess my focus would be that we need to, there are some real <coughs> deadlines on some of the grants. So we need to focus on those, get them then going. So we have five projects now. I think now we can get into these others that we have not made as much progress. Well, well please keep me apprised of those buildings. Oh, you will. Uh, because one of them is of least interest to me from a personal perspective. Of course, I only have one vote. And uh, so please keep us apprised of that. I sure will. And you know, eventually, you will have in your hand what I've got, not just a site feasibility, say, total feasibility, meaning financial feasibility, cost, space, you know. I mean, all those things to go into uh, the picture of site selection. So that, that will come to you eventually and probably several months down the road. Um, well, I want to let you finish, but I have another question. Well, I think on the, as far as the projects go, do you, is there any that I left out? Sure. We've concentrated most of our time with, with the bond money that we've already uh, uh, applied for in the first phase. Well, it's already been issued. Yes, been yes. issued. Yes. And what we will do once we get the engineers and architects on board for these projects, then Mazan and the staff can and start looking at the other projects as to the feasibility and which way to go with it. I, I do have another question. Uh, the streetscape, what? Uh, and I'm all for a streetscape on Main Street. I want Main Street to look good. But why is it so expensive? Or maybe it's not expensive. Are you talking about $9 million, uh, $709,952? Well, uh, let, let, me, let me put it this way. I have not evaluated the budget, but this budget was done over the years. Uh, it includes a fairly long street, you know, okay. from, um, from Walnut, uh, yeah. Barracue, down to Maine, and from Maine down to Six. six. So it, it covers a lot of area of totally uh, restoring, rehabbing the street. I'm still, I'm not, I, I mean, I'm not saying that it's too much, but in my, my mind, um, and I don't know what streetscapes cost, but it seems to be a hefty project there, comparatively the speaking one. to some of the other projects. In that same note, that project will be broke up into phase, right? Oh, okay. I'm said that that's not in will be several phases. We've already broken up into three or four phases, at least. So the money is sort of a budget target, and also availability will come into play when we decide how much of it to be done. You know, the streetscape involves a lot of things, from lights to landscape, Understood. to painting, so they're expensive, as whatever you deal with. To infrastructure. Infrastructure, it, it gets expensive. We want it to look good, but I, you know, I, um, this is my, not my area of expertise, so I, that's why I'm asking questions. Yes, sir. Well, uh, stop here from asking you. <laughs> do you have a feel, do y'all have a feel for what the reduced tax collections is going to do to the projects? Do we have a? Uh, let, let me address that. You know, at this particular point in time, we are still evaluating <clears throat> that, you know, based upon what the tax collection was when we issued the bond, we're still within the guidelines and still within the amount collected that we anticipated. But we realize that, are you speaking of for the last two months? Or what are you speaking well, of? The whole time, nearly the whole time it's been collected, it's been below. No. From the, from the, from the moment we started collecting, it was below projections. Now, let, let me have Mr. Miller, who's out today, give you a report on that at the next meeting. I think it would be good. He's, he's provided some reports. He's provided some reports to the council previously but we can tell you where we are with that. Yeah. Okay, we'll be more than happy to share that. On the uh, replacement relocation station on the fire station at 30th and Ash, based on your timeline, it looks like you have determined the, uh, you're ready for the procurement of the land. Have y'all figured out where that's gonna be yet? Yes, yes sir, we, we're, we, we have 
located the site that was deferred, and we're in the process of negotiating with the property owner now. They have been in contact, and we're in the process of going through the appraisal uh, phase and things like that. And if you like to, the chief can speak to how they came about that particular site. If you need that information now, or you can get it at public safety. Huh? I'll talk to him later. Okay. Thank you. All right. As a matter of fact, let me ask you to do this. At public safety meeting May 1st, uh, May 7th, please bring the public safety group up to date on the three sites that were selected and how the recommendation came about that the site that, that, that the national group recommended and you guys recommended. All right. Thanks, sir. Any other questions of these gentlemen? Uh, I, I appreciate them the formatting and understanding the color coding. Very, very professional. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Any other sites? I'm sorry, any other questions? <laughs> yeah. That's all from That's it. Okay. Thank you. Thank right. you, Mr. Matthew. Okay. Thank you, Reverend Boyd. Okay, next on the agenda we have uh, development and planning, all steps. Mr. Mayor, we had uh, two people to come before the committee and they both uh, purchased permits. Uh, okay, so we're going to remo remove these two? Yes, that's, okay. Everybody has a copy of the two that's going to be amended. Okay. That's all. Thanks, sir. Uh, next, we have Mr. Eastley, I'm oh, sorry, Traffic and Aviation, sir. No report, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Administration, Mr. Eastley. I don't have a report, but I do have a question. Uh, do we have any idea when the uh, employees and uh, report will be out on uh, retirement? Here we are into April again. The three and a half months, the statements for retirement statements are not out again. Okay, we'll, we'll let's see the clerk. That information was sent in uh, by the deadline, February 29th, and it's in the actuary's hand. Okay. Uh, the second question is that I had tried to ask last year and tried to get an answer to. You tried actually, to do what, sir? To the actuary on how you figure the lump sum payments. And they sent, he sent back the thing, and everybody sent back the thing and said, you know, the, what the article, I mean, the ordinances or whatever. And it says you can, you know, it tells you how that uh, it's 50, on the elected officials, it's 50% of their last pay and everything. But it does not say how to figure the lump sum payment. And I don't know if we need the, the city attorney to get it. I don't know if we need the city clerk to get it. I don't know if we need the retirement board. But I want to know how the lump sum payments are figured. I want to know how they're calculated. I want to know how they're it ought to be a real simple thing where well, they hand it to us and so I don't know if it's I don't know if the retirement board has it. Somebody has to have something that says you do you do this step, this step, this step, and that's how you put in the lump sum. There has to be something. He don't just reach out there and get it. If you would, sir, let me get with you on that. You said you've requested that from him. I uh, Okay, did you request it? Worked on it, and he just he doesn't seem like I'm. I'm but I won't. I don't care if the city attorney has to send him mm -hmm. an order. I don't care what it is. I want to know okay. how. Let, let me do this. Lump let me communicate. Well, more or less the formula. I want the formula. I want to know how it's done. I know uh, it's all I've asked for. And, and okay. Well, let me let me initiate a call to him with you, and we'll see if he can share that information. With I, I, I'm, I'm not sure if that's. All I need is for all, somebody. Let's go. Let's 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 just call up there and say, "Here's what we need." Let, let's let's try and get that done. You talking about the non-uniform, right? Yeah. Yeah. Non-uniform. Non-uniform. Or any of them. Okay. If, if they're different, I want to know how that's. I want to know how we figure lump sum payments See, for retirement. See, we have different actuaries for different pension boards. He's talking about non-uniform. Okay, so you're talking about non-uniform. Not fire. But non-uniform. Okay. Non does yeah. the, uh, now does the uniform? Do they have lump sum payments too? I, but yeah. I don't think let's 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 get together and we'll talk to the gentleman, the actuary, and I think you can explain to him what you're looking for, and he's the best to address that. We'll do that. It's real simple. You just call okay. and ask. I want to know how the lump yeah. sum payments are calculated. It, it, I don't know if his if his calculation is proprietary or what, sir. But let's let's do that and see what we come up with. Okay. Thank you.
All right, public safety, Ms. Hogan. Public safety met at 4 o'clock. We had a special meeting we were to hear from the Jim's Ambulance Service. And uh, there were two members of the committee present. We came to the conclusion that this is a legal matter, and we turned it over to the city attorney as well as Jim's attorney. And the city attorney is drafting another ordinance uh, with some with some modification that will make it legal. Jim's, uh, their representation is declaring that our legislation is illegal the way that it is informed, the way that it is formed, and our our city attorney will be doing, uh, be drafting another form of legislation to make it legal, and they still may have a dispute with that, but we uh, that will be presented, and it's really nothing that the council members can do at this point. It is a legal matter, and I have as well as other count, other committee members, we have come to the conclusion that we're going to let our legal department handle the situation. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. All right, Ms. Hogan, would you take us on to the proposed ordinances and resolutions, ma'am? I have a resolution encouraging the police department to utilize the community development center in the University Park area of the city for advancing law enforcement in the area. Would you like me to read the full one? Yes, time. A resolution encouraging the police department to utilize the Family Communi Community Development Center in the University Park area of the city for advancing law enforcement in the area. Move for adoption. Second. It's been moved and probably second that a resolution encouraging the police department to utilize the Family Community Development Center in the University Park area of the city for advancing law <laughs> enforcement in the area. Okay, I think the chief has, has brought a staff member here that's responsible for that, those who speak to presently what's, what's been done and their position on this. Deputy Chief Powell? Yes, sir. Yes. I would just ask before you guys pass this. Can, can you this pull the mic down? I would ask if you pass this and take this under consideration that if we pass this for this particular ward, it's going to open, in my opinion, it's going to open the floodgates for every business, every community center we yeah. have to want this done. We just don't have the resources to do it. We can do extra patrols, which we're doing. Um, and modification, you know, we, we try to set, we do police reports at different businesses spread out throughout the city, trying to make sure we have police presence. And I would just like to take that into consideration. Any other questions? Yes, sir, Mayor. Yes, sir. Uh, I went back and changed line 20, 21, 22 to just encourage the uh, police department to make use of, of the facilities offered at no charge in the Family Community Development Corporation located at 1001 North Palm Street. Some of them, the uh, president and the, uh, some of the board members were coming and some things came up with them. And they just wanted to ask me to uh, let you all know that, once again, that. The facilities are free, and we just, I, I did what you all said. I, I went in there and I, I, I took out some things. I'm, I'm just trying to help the community over there in, in the Fourth Ward and the Family Community Development Center. And I'm not trying to open up, uh, as you, she was saying, Chief Powell, she helped me a lot also in the ward, but personally, I feel like if, uh, if another ward, uh, uh, could uh, offer a no charge or free of service. I mean, that's that's really what this. Uh, it is. It's good to establish this kind of presence inside of the community to help reduce crime. And once again, I just did what you all said. Do I went in there? I took it out. I'm not trying to uh, make the police department do anything. Just trying to encourage. I think it'll be a good start to help reduce crime now and going to the future. Any other questions? That question, I, my, and I had asked him for to change it where it didn't, to where it went to this form where all it is is actually an offer, and it's an offer they can use it or not use it. It's a place where if they want to, they can go sit down, and fill out reports or whatever they want, or if they want to use it, fine. It's available. If it's but there's no, 
There's nothing in here that says that the police department has to go to this area and, I mean, that they have to keep it staffed at all times. It's just a, it's an offer in my, that, and that's what I'd ask them to do is make it just an offer. It's available. If they want to use it, it's there, fine. If they don't, they don't have to. That's my understanding of the. Right. That's, that's basically it. Is that, is that okay with y'all if they? I mean, it's just. Chief? I mean, you're not, you're not commanded to put anybody there. Yeah, that's what I told uh, Alderman Mays when I spoke to him earlier about this. Yeah. But the problem I have is that you're advertising it as a substation. You were telling people you have a substation in the area, and if that be the case, I might as well put one at every church and every uh, business. Everything. We do business checks, we put cards in doors, we do all those things, but I just can't commit to saying I'm going to be at a particular business uh, and come there two days a week or three days a week because I'm putting myself in a situation where I don't want to be in the sports department. And I realize that's, it says in form of an officer substation. I really says that, but that's. But it says substation. Where is it substation? Second line. If we strike substation, is that okay? <laughs> it says in the I mean, form of an office or a substation. I mean, what, I mean, I don't understand. I don't understand the problem with them offering a facility huh? that you can you can use it or not use it. But we do that. We already have patrol officers that are assigned to zones. That are doing just what he's already doing, but you're asking the former ordinance man to say that it's now, you know, at black and white, that I've pretty much got to do this. No. So That's what it is not saying that you have to put some, it's there for your, if you can use it if you want to, or use, don't, you don't have to use it if you don't want to. If you say I can use it and I don't and put it that way in the ordinance, then I don't have a problem. That's the way it is. It's not an ordinance, this is a resolution which is non binding anyway. No resolution is binding, it's not a legal document. That's what I'm saying. Is it, I don't understand. They're offered the facility for use if you want it. If you don't want it, you don't have to go out there. Is that, I mean, that's, I, I don't understand the. Is that it, sir? We have somebody else with a question over here, so. No, it's, it's not obligating. That's one of the things I, I didn't want. I didn't want to obligate the police department, I, and I asked him not to. And I, uh, uh, but I don't want citizens to believe that, well, we got a substation here right, and right. we don't ever see them over here. And that's one of the things I think that they have concerns I about I that. when you say it's a substation and the citizen began to say, you have a substation here, when are we going to see some officers here? And people will right. misconstrue what's taking place right. there and we don't want them to think. And then, you know, the thing is you cannot get out of your car and do a report. All reports, that's the whole purpose of having mobile data training. Yeah, they don't have to get out of the cars anymore. They don't have That's to get out the cars anymore. yeah, right. Well, would this would this facility be a help if 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 we got to get our bike patrols back? Would that be a facility that would be a help at that point? That could be something we can address at that time. Okay. So if we took out substation and passage, don't advertise as a substation. Huh? <clears throat> don't advertise that we have a substation. That's what I'm saying. If we take if we if we just put in the form of an office and leave out substance. Yeah. Would you yeah. think that would be okay? Office, that means you want to be to come in and do a report. If that's the case, I'm going to have to let my technology guy come up here and talk about how much that's going to cost to have it where the service available in there and the whole nine yards. Well, that? I mean, if we don't. Just, okay. but, but, they're not trying to do that. We don't. We don't I don't understand when we've got somebody in the city, citizens that's just offering a building for your free use. That if you need it, you got it. That's what I told, and he would tell you I told him this at the. the at, the meat that I talked to him. I told him I have no problem whatsoever saying that I would come over there. But I, so I just think about putting in the resolutions, making it seem as though I'm not doing my job. I'm coming no, no, no. doing what he's asking me to do. We stop at every business in the city, leave cards, patrol new zones, do the whole nine yards. Yeah. I'm doing what he's currently asking me to do currently. Yeah. Jeez, I, just, I just didn't understand that. Charge. It's just, it's, it's no charge to, 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 the, to the Pine Bluff. It's something the citizens ask me to do in that area. I mean, that's all we're doing. It's not. Now, are, are they asking Steve, excuse me, America, are you asking Steve Pine Bluff? Is it asking, are they asking for a substation? No, just police presence. Like a chicken, they can come. We encourage them to come when they want to. It's not a everyday. You know, they can, like you say, encourage them to come well, at their to own the, discretion. To the director of that building, she led me to believe that she was wanting a substation there. That's exactly what she told me when we talked about in the hallway. And that's what yeah. she said to me, that she wanted a substation at that location. 
Well, on behalf of them, now they, they, they agreed when we changed it up, they reviewed it on television and they called me today and said, Steve, we'll agree what you got. I mean, it's just simple. It's no charge just to come by and stop. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. simple. Mr. Sepps. I, I think this is why we ought to have our, have our committee meetings. Some of these things that we are trying to hash out here, if you would have a meeting and call a meeting, we could hash those things out. Because when the citizen begin to ask you questions right. about that, that means they have an expect, they're expecting something. They're expecting it. Because if, you, if the citizen told you to ask this question about where is our substation, when are they going to come? Now when they don't see it, they're expecting somebody to give them some answers. But if we would have had a meeting, we could have hashed some of these things out. We come back here to this table and we address this thing before and we asked you to have a meeting. And you never call a meeting. Now you come back here and you're expecting us to go back and deal with the same thing that we were dealt with before. And, and, and we can say it, it sounds simple here, but in the mind and perception of the people is where your problem is going to come in at. Not us up here, but the people out there in the community. I was asking you all, on okay, behalf sir. of the citizens over there in, in the fourth ward in the north side, if you would su support this. It's, I mean, I, I do my best to help people. Seem like, and I'm not going to stop. Okay, sir. Let, we, may I finish, Mayor? May sir, I finish? I'm, I'm talking. We're on the time frame. We, I we understand, but I mean, we, we're talking about something to help the citizens. This is nothing personal to Our me. job is to help all citizens. This we is, do that. And, and the citizens expect us to do things, all the steps. They expect us to do things for them. But I think that's the point he's saying. They have, if we give them the wrong expectation, then that creates a problem. Uh, the police department has this community policing strategies and initiatives that they put in place. I think what the chief has said, that we don't have a problem with stopping by there. They can stop there now. Mm -hmm. They probably do and leave a cart and do things of that nature. Mm -hmm. but, but we don't want the responsibility of having a building that's left open for us. You know, because the police do patrol 24-7. It's, it's going to be, they're going to have a key. Yeah, yeah. Need key that, that's what I'm saying. They don't want the responsibility of having a key, being there 24-7, and things of uh, uh, being responsible for that, sir. That's why they are saying that at this particular point in time, they appreciate the offer. Mayor, Mayor I have a, a problem sometime with some of you all going against a lot of things that I try to do for the citizens. No. I mean, really, Mayor. It's not no. fair. Man. No. I don't think I don't think anybody on here is expressing. That. I'm not saying everybody. I'm just saying some. And I don't I'm, say I don't think anybody is expressing that, sir. I'm, and I'm through with the discussion and okay. it's up for the vote. Okay. Mayor Reed, how would yeah. it, if there are, may I make one statement? If there are, if he's saying that the officers will have a key, it won't be the same officers that's patrolling in that area from time to time. That's right. So that means uh, that everybody happen to work that area would Need have to have a key. And which, you know, uh, would not be a good thing because if somebody loses a key, then, you know, you can't hold any responsibility to anybody. <clears throat> we were voted by the system to make decisions, and that's an easy a, a decision to make. It's just the key. I mean, we can, I mean, it's, you, you're making this thing complicated. It's, it's multiple keys, sir. Well, when it's just, it's simple, though. Okay. I, mean, you got, I think your point's We have an area in Broadmoor, and, uh, and uh, that used to be, where the officers uh, stopped by there. Am I correct, Mrs. Hoka? And they actually were stationed there at one time. Uh huh. And so, and that ceased. Uh, but if if this is passed, I'm sure we will be getting some more uh, calls. And and uh, you know, and I'm concerned as well about the name of substation because if somebody needs help, they feel that the police right. is right down the street. And, and that's not the case. The police won't be there. All righty. Hearing no other discussion, motion on the floor. Uh, all in favor of the motion, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Okay. All in opposed? Aye. aye. Motion fails for a lack of a fifth vote. As a resolution, instructing the Pavlov Police Department to assign two detectives or officers to handle cold 
Felony criminal cases involving death or serious injury and providing for regular updates concerning progress in the cases. A resolution instructing the Palm Bluff Police Department to assign two detectives or officers to handle cold felony criminal cases involving death or serious injury and providing for regular updates concerning progress in the cases. Move for adoption. Second. It's been moved and probably seconded that a resolution instructing the Pine Bluff Police Department to assign two detectives or officers to handle cold felony criminal cases involving death or serious injury and providing for regular updates concerning progress in the case. All right, the floor is open for discussion. Any questions up here for yeah, Chief I, or her well, staff? I had, I had visited with, Pardon me? I had visited with uh, Mr. May ahead of time, I, I, and, and I told him I can't support it with it instructing to have two officers assigned to that. I'm, I'm not, and it was about being about the business, telling the police department where they need to place their officers on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, if it, if we had a resolution that just says that we encourage the police department to work on cold cases as often as they can with as much, you know, as diligence as they can, that's fine, but I'm not going to support it with a, uh, having to assign two officers to a coke I mean that's dedicated that away I, yeah. I mean that would be determined by the chief and the and the, and the hierarchy of the police department as to how they handle it but I have no problem with having a resolution that states that we'd like to have cold cases uh, worked on and, and you know with whatever appropriate times they can and with as much resources as they can use i mean that they can spare anyone would you like the chief and her staff to speak to that well, let me say something before they come up <laughs> go ahead ms walker had her hand up okay though. go ahead go ahead oh, you know i just wanted to say in reference to a particular cold case that's referenced in uh, yeah. uh in this resolution <clears throat> we can't i do think that. that that case is already being worked on uh, uh by lieutenant rollison and and he could probably give Mr. Mays more insight of what they are doing. You know, not not particular in this case because they won't tell uh, anybody what they are doing. You know, maybe not even the family that they would tell certain things, but they are not going to tell things. But the fact that they are working on it, which is quite evident. Well, it's actually before Lieutenant Ross, Detective Sappho was the first one to initiate and start working on that. Who? When was that? Two thousand six. Oh, I'm talking more recent. But here's what I want to say. On any of those cases, can you imagine giving updates to this many citizens? You can't do that. First of all, you can't. You can't release that families, though. You're not talking no, about you. You can't release it to the family. Well, I mean, just like. Autumn, when initially said, I'm willing to change the line to, to let him encourage them to do it instead of placing two detectives. I'm willing to work with you all. I'm not trying to make this stuff different. But, sir, if they do that, when they have reasons to speak with the family regarding an investigation, they do that. The police department will do that. And I don't think that we're in a position to designate which case that they're going to be operating on. Yeah. I think that creates a problem because now we put ourselves in a position now we're dictating and telling the police department I need you to work on this one and not that one and I don't think we need to get in that posture of doing that. Mr. Yes, Mayor, the last two resolutions are saying something other than what this city council does. We are the legislative body for the city. And, and we're not the body that dictates and tells the police department or any other department what to do. And that's what we're doing with the last two ordinances. We're actually saying that this is what you must do and this is what you can't do. And then we are being specific with a, with a case in the last and the second ordinance. These families are in hurt or in pain. And when you specify a certain family, you got other families out there that have problems too. I just think that we need to lead the police department to do their jobs. I think that um, uh, her lieutenants and the mayor, when they have something that uh, they, they need a binder on, 
I think they'll work it out among themselves. I just don't think it should be in the legislative body of the city to do that. We are, we are dictating what the chief of police is supposed to do, and I think she knows her job. Let's go ahead and go. Well, I'm not saying that the chief is not doing the job. I'm just saying there's many cold cases that, I mean, over the years, just we just need to pull them back up one by one every six months. Just look at them. If I may add, Mr. Mayor, this is not neighborhood watch, the city council. <laughs> It appears that you, your, your resolutions and your ordinances always appear that we're in neighborhood watch. We're city council. I understand. You can't fix every little bitty problem in the neighborhood. We're city council. I understand. And, and Alderman Brown, every resolution that I put out here, you really disappointed me on it. Okay, excuse me, sir. Excuse yeah, me, Mr. Yeah, Brown. we talk. Okay, no, well, that's not, you don't talk back and forth. Talk back across back. Sir. You don't do that. You too, sir? I'm finished. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We have a vote, vote on the floor. <clears throat> All in favor of the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. God bless you, Phil. God bless you. The resolution authorizes the mayor to execute agreements with protection services with Reed Architecture Forum, Nelson Architecture Forum, and McClellan Engineering Inc. and ETC Engineers. A resolution authorizing the mayor to execute agreements for professional services with Reed Architectural Firm, Nelson Architectural Firm, McClellan Engineering Incorporated, and ETC Engineers. Move for adoption. Second. It's been moved and probably second that a resolution authorizing the mayor to execute agreements for professional services with Reed Architectural Firm, Nelson Architectural Firm, McClellan Engineering, Inc., and ETC Engineers. I think the floor is open for discussion. If there are any questions that you might have, Mr. Uh, Mazan had to leave, but I think Larry Matthews and, and uh, uh, Angela Parker is here uh, dealing with things that are taking place within the parks. Pardon? <laughs> okay. As a, uh, I have something. As a member of the Public Works with all the board as a chair, I'm a member of it. Uh, I recommend to do pass on this also. Thank you, sir. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Now, I'm supposed to know it. I know it. I always say that and something I should know, I sh I'll let you know I should know. Uh, what is the fire station number in Dalloway? Six. 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 Okay, that's Moreland good Street. because I know it needs some repair. Thank it's you. on Moreland Street. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, sir. Okay, if there are no other questions for them, all in favor of the motion, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Any opposes? The motion carries 7-0. Okay. A resolution declaring certain houses, builders, and our structures as nuisances and ordering their abatement. A resolution declaring certain houses, buildings, and our structures as nuisances and ordering their abatement. Move for adoption. Second. Uh, uh, Steps, I'd, yeah. I'd like to amend that to remove these two houses that you are both. Second. Have. Pardon me? Second. Second. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Um, all in favor of the amendment, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Right. Okay, 7 0. It's been moved and properly seconded that the original as amended be approved. All in favor of the original as amended, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Okay, 7 0. Okay. I'll entertain a motion. It's been booted probably second that we're doing this meeting. Thank you.